Alright, we need to look at some more examples of composing functions from section 1.6. The problems I'm going to do in this video are all part of a block of problems where f of x is defined to be 2x plus 1 and g of x is defined to be 2x squared minus 3. So I'm looking at problem 18 on page 132 and we're trying to evaluate g of f of minus 5. Now there are two ways I showed you how to do these problems and I'll do a few of them, maybe two of them, one way and the other three in the other way. So read this again right to left. Minus 5 is going to go into f. Whatever comes out of f is going to go into g. So, plug minus 5 into f. What do you get? 2 times minus 5 plus 1. That's minus 10 plus 1 or minus 9. Now, we plug minus 9, the result of f, into g. So 5 goes into f, what came out of f is going to go into g, and g of minus 9 is 2 times minus 9 squared minus 3, and minus 9 squared is the same thing as 9 squared, it's 81 so 2 times 81, I believe, is 162. And subtract 3, and you get, I believe, 159 as your answer. So again, when you have a problem like this, we're asking you to plug minus 5 into F, find its output, plug that output into G and find the result. Let's look at 20. Now F and G are still going to be the same. So in 20 we're trying to find G of F of 1 half. So 1 half is going to go into f. What's f of one half? Well, f of one half is two times a half plus one. Two times a half, two halves make a whole, so it's one plus one, so we get two out of f. That two is going into g. That's what this tells us half into f, result of f into g. Result of g, that's our answer. So let's work towards our answer. Get the result of g at 2. g of 2 is 2 times 2 squared minus 3. That's 2 times 4 minus 3, 8 minus 3, or 5. So that's the result for g of f of 1 half. Now let's take a look at 22. f and g are still going to be the same, but we're switching things up because now we're looking at f of g, and now not of a number but of another letter, an arbitrary number, C. And we're going to switch things up because I'm going to do things the other way here. This is simply F of G of C. Well, work my way inside out. What's G of C? If you plug C into G, you're going to get 2c squared minus 
3. Now, 2c squared minus 3 is going into f. So instead of x, whenever I see x in the definition of f, I'm going to replace it with 2c squared minus 3. So rather than 2x plus 1, we're going to have 2c squared minus 3 plus 1. And this is 4c squared minus 6, distributing the 2. And that's 4c squared minus 5. On 24, we're back to g of f of, still again, minus a, an arbitrary number. So sticking with this method of doing things, which as far as I can tell is about the only method, the only way of doing this. The other way is just basically rewriting this, but rewriting it. So g is on the outside. g is the last thing that gets evaluated. Then comes f, and into f we plug minus a. So rather than x, we look at the definition of f and replace it with minus a. Replace x with minus a. So instead of 2x plus 1, it's going to be 2 times minus a plus 1. And that's, if we simplify a little bit, minus 2a plus 1. So now, whenever we see x in g, in the formula for g, we'll replace x with minus 2a plus 1. So instead of 2x squared minus 3, it's going to be 2 times minus 2a plus 1 squared minus 3. Rather than x, we put what's between the parentheses here in for x. Now if you'd want, you could pretty much leave the answer like this and I'd be okay with it. Um, to get the answer in the back of the book, you have to distribute this out or foil, foil it to get the answer that the back of the book has. But you can stop here if you prefer. So we have 2 times minus 2a times minus 2a is a plus 4a. Minus 2a times 1 is, or 2a squared. Minus 2a times plus 1, is, or times a plus 1, is a minus 2a. 1 times minus 2a is minus 2a. 1 times 1 is 1. So I can do a little bit of simplification before I distribute the two. I can combine these two like terms, the middle two terms, and get minus 4a. No like terms anymore, so let's distribute the two. 8a squared minus 8a plus 2, and then subtract 3. Well, the only like terms here are the 2 and the minus 3. And 2 minus 3 is a minus 1. So we get that as our answer. Now 26 is interesting. Because 26 has us evaluate g of g of minus 1. That means we're going to plug minus 1 into g. Whatever we get out of g goes back into g. So if you do this 
kind of the first way I was doing these problems, you plug minus 1 into g and get 2 times minus 1 squared minus 3, which is 2 times 1 minus 3. Well, that's minus 1. Then you plug this result back into g and figure out what it is. But if you're quick, you realize we already know what g of minus 1 is. We just figured that out. g of minus 1 is minus 1. And that's your answer. If you look at the other method of doing this, you do g of g of minus 1 figure out what g of minus 1 is. Well, we found out that that's minus 1. And then plug minus 1 into g to figure out, oh, that's minus 1 as well. This is what's known as a fixed point of g. g does nothing to minus 1 as an input. You input minus 1 into g, you input minus 1 into g, you get minus 1 as the output. g doesn't touch minus 1. It's a fixed point. And uh, you see this idea of kind of recursion or repeating the same process over and over again a lot in um, fractal art. That's how all of fractal art is generated. It's just by applying a function or a process again and again and again and again and again and again and, again and, again and, again and you get these gorgeous pictures.